Hi, in this video we're going to use the C Sharp language to demonstrate several different types of while loops in programming. So here's the list of what we're going to demonstrate. So I won't go and read them all, but you're going to see that we have six different examples of how while loops can and cannot be used and what you should watch out for. So let's get started with our first example. So I'm here in Visual Studio and you can see that I have a console app chosen. So I'm going to paste in some code and explain what we're about ready to do. So this is the simplest of the while loops that we'll look at. It's a counting while loop. So you can see that the comments tell us what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to set a starting variable. And so it's an integer whose value is zero. Then we come to the while condition. And this is why it's, this is why it's called a while loop. And so while the condition inside the parentheses is true, we will continue to execute whatever's between the curly brackets. And as you can see, I can use a less than sign here. So less than is less than 30. But you can also use these other ones too. So you can use a double equals, not equals, greater than, less than, greater than or equals, or less than or equals. So any of these will be a valid condition. You can also use ands and ors to put multiple conditions in. Then inside here, I'm going to simply add five to the counter and print it. And then we'll have a message that falls out at the end when the while loop finishes. So let's run this and see what it does. And so here's the console app and it's showing me that I have five or six different lines printed. So it says counter equals five, 10, 15, 25, and 30. And then we have the message at the end that says all done. So why did it stop at 30? It stopped because we got to plus five when we were at 25 and then it did not advance any further. So here's a few experiments that you could try. What happens if you initially set counter to be something greater than 30? What happens if you set it to be a negative number? What happens instead of adding five, you multiply it or subtract? Can you make different uh, variations on this counter? So experiment here and uh, pause the movie and then come back and we'll get to the next example. All right, so I stopped the program. Now I'm going to delete all the information that I had just typed and I'm gonna paste in another example. So on this example, we're going to take a look at some input from the user, and then we will continue on until the user changes a certain input value. So let's see what this one does. So this one has something called a secret number. It's initially set to zero, and it says we're going to please ask for a number to be entered, so it's an integer. We're going to do a while loop that says while the secret number is less than 100. So if anyone enters any number, like 50 or 0 or 99, this loop will continue. And then you can see that we are going to do a console read line, which means I'm going to ask for input. And then I'm going to convert this using a parse statement into an integer. So as you can see, secret number is an integer, and we're going to assign it as this. So this parse statement will translate a string into an integer, parsing the string. And if they type in something besides an integer, the program will crash. So there's no error checking here for that error. And then we're going to print it, and then we're going to continue on until they type in something that is bigger than 100. So let's run it and see how this works. OK, the program's up and running, and it does say, please enter an integer. So I'm going to put in 77. And now it tells me, you entered 77. And it says, I will ask you again until you enter something greater than 100. Let's put in 0. Same thing. Let's put in negative 99. Let's try 100. And now it says we're all done. And so the while loop would execute an infinite number of times until the user chose something 100 or greater. Now you thought it would have to be 101, didn't you? So here's the question. Why did 100 break the loop? Think about it. All right, it's time for the next example. So I'm going to delete the code that I just typed and paste in another piece. So you can see that the uh, string is now the first initial value, and it's called secret message. And it's set to an empty string. So two quotation marks together means no characters, an empty string. And then it says, it says, please try to guess the password. So now the while condition has got this funny statement. It's got an exclamation mark equals. And so this means not equals. So the secret password is ASDF. Now you can change that to anything, but this is my password. And it says we're going to do a read line. And then if the message now is equal to ES or ASDF, in other words, they guessed the right password, then we're going to issue this command called break. So break means break out of the loop. So it'll stop the while loop. And then we'll print a message again. So let's run it and see how this looks. 
So here we go again. Now this time I can put in numbers or letters and the program will be just fine with it, no errors. So it says you entered the string, try to guess the password. So I could literally sit here all day and type things until I type in the secret ASDF and when I press that it says hey you're done you've guessed the password so that is a example of something that literally is an infinite loop it will never end unless you get the right answer okay on to the next example so I'm gonna delete this one and paste in the next so this is an example of a loop that actually never runs let's see why so I set an integer y equal to 10 and then I asked while y is greater than 0 or I'm sorry y is less than 0 then we want to subtract 1 and then print it so why will this not execute so look at the conditions and then come up with an, a theory so I'm promising it won't execute let's see what happens I'm gonna run it and see what actually does happen so here we go here's the application and as you see the top it says done with a while loop that will never run so it never printed anything as you can see in the code it was supposed to say y equals something so ask yourself why did it skip everything in the while loop section it never got there and then it instantly jumped to this line that says I'm done so look at the value of y y was 10 now it says we're going to execute this while y is less than 0 so is less than 0 no 10 is greater than 0 and so the while loop did the condition check and since it was false it skipped it and never ran even one time and so that's an example of a while loop that might not ever run all right time for the next example let's delete this code here and paste in the new one this one is called a do while loop so a do while loop is a little bit reversed we're going to start with a statement that says do and we will do the loop while the condition is true so the difference is that we check for the condition after the loop so it will run at least one time so what are we doing here we're setting x to 10 we're going to subtract 1 print the value and then we're going to run this while x is greater than 0 so let's see what this does all right so here's the while loop results so it prints from 9 all the way down to 0 and then it says it's done so it printed 9 because we had it start initially at 10 subtracted 1 and then printed the value so it didn't print 10 but it did start running at value 10 and so that is a do that runs at least once and while at the end so if we were to modify this one slightly and we could say do while this is greater than 100 this this means that the, the condition is false because 10 is not greater than 100 it's less than 100 so what does that do when I run will it run at least once as I promised let's check it out all right so here's the results it printed the 9 and then immediately says we're done so even though the condition was never true it ran the first time through so it says hey, I'll print the 9 and then it says while X is greater than or greater than 100 and of course X was not greater than 100 so it stopped and so it ran exactly one time okay let's try another example here this is a math problem that's called factorial so what are we doing with a factorial well this is the kind of problem where you say if for example 5 factorial was given that means take the answer of 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and that's a very big number and so I'm going to tell the user please enter a number smaller than 12 that way we don't get too large now what we're doing, going to do then is input the uh, message or the number and put it in the variable called n then we're going to set a decimal type so a decimal type is obviously it has decimal points and that is also set to one now we're going to do a while loop that has an infinite uh, condition so while true which means it's always going to run and you would think that the program would freeze because it never has an exit condition well it does have an exit condition here it's called break so we're going to say if x or if n is less than or equal to one it's time to stop then we'll set the break and factorial means take a number and times uh, by the n and let's see what happens we're going to subtract one and get the results so run it and see how it goes all right so here it goes it says please enter a number less than 12 let's try five and press enter and it says that the n factorial then is 120 so the while loop ran and it only had to print when it finally finished the while loop so there was no printing inside but as you can see it's calculating it correctly check your math 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 should be 120 
If you'd like to see an example of what a for loop can do, that's another type of loop, and I'll put a video up for that. If you want to see how to make applications with C Sharp, like simple games and things, I'll put a playlist here called Beginning C Sharp, which will teach you how to program. And so my name is Shad Sluter. Please subscribe if you want to learn how to program in C Sharp, and we'll see you soon.